Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar today. I am Monica Burbach, Product Manager for Biochemicals at Biozyme, with an over 20 years of experience in molecular biology biochemistry. We are happy that so many of you could join us for our webinar today. Thank you. Um, the aim of Biozyme webinars is to transport new and exciting information about technology and new products to all interested people. Often marketing material is not elaborated enough to understand all details and the complex contents of that lead to a superior performance and better results. Today, we will introduce information about RNA depletion. I'm happy that Anna Lisner from Cytools will tell us more about this. At the end of the session, there will be time at about five minutes for a discussion. Please type your questions via chat into the systems. Whenever you like, we will answer them at the end. Thank you in advance for your input. Anna, please start with your talk. Thank you, Monica, for the kind introduction. And yeah, I'm Anna Lizer. I'm the head of sales and marketing at Cytos Biotech, and I will be giving the talk today. So I think we can just jump right into it and start talking about ribopools, uh, the any species ribosomal RNA depletion kits for RNA-seq and ribosome profiling. So uh, before I talk about ribopools themselves, I wanted to introduce our company to you. Um, as iTools Biotech was founded in 2013 as a spin out of Intana Bioscience and the University of Regensburg, specifically Professor Dr. Meister, he's a co-founder of iTools Biotech. To your advantage or for your advantage, we are a all scientist team with a core expertise of RNA interference and bioinformatics and customized oligonucleotide reagent design and production. And you will see this throughout the talk, and I will also uh, repeat it a few times. But one thing that our products have all in common is that they're highly complex and optimally designed oligonucleotide pools. And we also offer services all around our core expertise of RNA interference, uh, big data analysis suit called Phenobolt. We also offer RNAi screening and expression analysis projects. As promised, I wanted to show you um, the complex pooling approach that I mentioned before. But before we talk about the complex pooling, I wanted to uh, direct your attention to the left-hand side of the slide. On the left-hand side, you can see a single oligo that is uh, supposed to be targeting a gene represented here in green. Um, and it does it perfectly, it targets it, everything is fine. However, to achieve the goal that you wanted it to, you have to use high concentrations of that oligo. And high concentrations, you, as you probably know, usually lead to so-called off-target effects, aka unspecific binding of other genes. And this leads to uh, efficiency that's, that varies in between replicates and in between uh, experiments. And this takes a lot of time and money to um, to put together and make sense out of it. So to save you time and money, um, as iTools Biotech came up with a solution that is quite easy. It is pooling several oligos into a pool. So all of these oligos that are in our pools are have a different sequence, meaning that all of these uh, oligos that are in a pool target a different part of the gene that is supposed to be targeted. And since you have so many different oligos targeting all the same gene, you need only very low concentrations of each of the oligos. And this dilutes away the off-target effect, meaning that unspecific binding is diluted away. Um, and this pooling approach um, leads to higher target specificity and increased efficiency and reproducibility, which all of us want. Um, and this pooling approach is not just used in the rebel pools, the ribosome RNA depletion tools, but also the RAP pools, the RNA affinity purification tools, and also the SI pools, our RNA interference um, based tool. 
and to give you or I, I wanted to give you a little bit of a background story of how of how the story uh, of, of, of us being involved in ribosomal RNA depletion actually started. So um, a group from Bayreuth in Germany um, has asked us if we could help them with a, with a thing. And the thing is, they are working with Schmitti Mediterranean, this planarian flatworm. Um, and this planarian flatworm has stunning regenerative abilities, which means that you can cut it into many pieces, specifically 279 pieces, and each of these pieces will then regenerate into a whole new worm. And it is known that these worms um, cannot reproduce, um, regenerate into a new worm if you knock down SMEDV2 and SMEDV3, respectively. And SMEDV2 and SMEDV3 and actually the worms that the pieces after knockdown they will die 12 days and 21 days post feeding of the rnai for smedv2 and smedv3 and these uh, smedv2 and smedv3 are pv proteins uh, and pv proteins are organoid prote proteins and as you may know organoid proteins need small non-coding rnas to fulfill their function as gene regulator uh, regulatory uh, proteins and PV proteins need pi RNAs, PV interacting RNAs, for their function of uh, regulating genes. And this group, this uh, the, in the, uh, the group in Bayreuth, they wanted to understand what happens uh, on transcriptional level before and after RNAi knockdown of SMEDV2 and SMEDV3. And since there was no tool for Schmidt Team Mediterranean to reduce um, to economize RNA seq, they needed a tool to deplete ribosomal RNAs, and they asked us for it. And since you might know, um, 80 to 90 percent of total RNA actually is made out of ribosomal RNAs in any in all of the species, and this limits detection of the relevant part of the transcriptome, meaning the messenger RNAs and the non-coding RNAs. And to economize RNA seq, we decided to uh, help. Uh, researchers with a ribosomal RNA depletion kit. Um, and since probably all of you know, um, a lot of people are doing poly A priming um, and not do RNA depletion, mostly because there's no RNA depletion kits available for their species. Um, I wanted to summarize the benefits and uh, disadvantages of both of these um, of both of these uh, methods to reduce uh, ribosomal RNAs. Pool A priming um, has many benefits, including that it's quite cheap and is easy to use. However, um, it has a strong bias on the poly a, based on the poly a length of the poly a tail, um, meaning that the longer the poly a tail, the more abundant this mRNA is in your um, library. Moreover, poly A priming cannot detect any non polyadenylated RNAs, um, like non coding RNAs, histones, and none of the prokaryotes have poly A tails. Moreover, immature transcripts cannot be, um, cannot be enriched, more, and degraded RNA and FFPE samples, it doesn't really work well, poly A priming, as since the, since the RNA is degraded, um, and you need the three prime end of the poly A, uh, the, the, of the mRNA, you cannot really use poly A priming for degraded RNA samples. Hence, ribosomal RNA depletion is more often the optimal solution. And these are the benefits of ribosomal RNA depletion. Um, with, with ribosomal RNA depletion, you're able to detect non polyadenylated RNAs, it enables RNA seq with degraded RNA and FFPE samples, and obviously it can also be used for prokaryotes as you're not, um, as you're not limited by the poly A tail. And ribosomal RNA depletion is bias-free and doesn't introduce a three prime bias. And this is the uh, ribosomal RNA depletion uh, workflow that um, the group in Bayreuth and us came up with. You start off with a with a total RNA isolated from your species or from your cell culture, and you include the rebel pool, and the rebel pool is a DNA oligo that is biotinylated. 
And since it is uh, since the rubber pools are antisense to ribosomal RNAs, they will hybridize to the ribosomal RNAs. And to capture and remove the uh, ribosomal RNAs, you can use streptavin encoded magnetic beads, and then you can just uh, use a magnetic rack and then pipe it out the depleted RNA and then use it for cDNA uh, library preparation. And all of this protocol takes uh, approximately 70 minutes. Um, it depends on the purification method that you choose, but as you can see, it's quite fast and an easy workflow. And to come back to the planarian uh, rebel pool that we designed, I wanted to show you some data that Jana Kim from the University of Bayreuth um, has um, published. In these three most left panels, you can see poly A, B1, B2, and B3, which are two, uh, uh, three independent um, poly A priming experiments. And as you can see, even at first glance, the um, enrichment efficiency varies quite a bit, um, not just in between the three experiments, but also within uh, um, the experiments in the three replicates shown here. And Again, at first glance, you can already see the ribo-depleted um, library that um, Jana Kim um, produced using the rubber pool that we designed for her. You can see that um, it's quite uniform and the depletion efficiency is also much more efficient between 1 and 1.2% of the reads only mapped to ribosomal RNAs. And moreover, rubber pools did not introduce a like did not introduce a bias into the transcript home that was uh, retrieved after ribosomal RNA depletion with the planarian rubber pool compared to uh, any of the poly A primed uh, transcript homes. So for one, rubber pools are more efficient and second, are more reproducible than poly A priming. And this, again, uh, I wanted to show you to uh, remind you that complexity matters. Um, and this data set is actually dates back to, to the end of 2019, ever since we started doing it or producing and providing the rebel pools. And we wanted to see how complex the pool actually needs to be. Um, so we used um, three different mixes of oligos that are antisense and map to different um, parts of the human 28S ribosomal RNA and did depletion with them and also did depletion with only one oligo from each of these mixes to see, yeah, like I said, to see what complexity actually is necessary to achieve a good and efficient ribosomal RNA depletion. When using only one oligo, you can see it doesn't really impact the the ribosomal RNA. Um, so it doesn't really work with just one oligo. And the more oligos you put into the mix, 11, 22, and 33, you can see yeah, depletion efficiency is really great for the 28S human ribosomal RNA. Hence, we decided um, the more complex, the better. Um, and ever since then, we cover the ribosomal RNAs as much as uh, possible and as much as needed. It really depends on how degraded your RNA is also. Okay, so now we will start with uh, the rubber pool portfolio. And I decided to start with the pen rubber pools. I, was, I wanted to um, kind of show you uh, what great uh, rubber pools we have. And the pen rubber pools are, I think, the um, most interesting uh, rubber pools that we have. The pen rubber pools cover many, many species from a phylogenetic group, for example, prokaryotes, plants, mammals, birds, water sponges, fungi, or protozoan blood parasites. And yes, here it says seawater rubber pool. I know it sounds a little weird at first, but we have, we have a lot of customers asking for um, ribosomal RNA depletion kits for the most unique and peculiar RNA mixes. For example, this seawater rubber pool um, is literally designed for RNA that was isolated from seawater. So the customer asked us to combine the pan prokaryote rubber pool, the pan plant rubber pool, the pan mammal rubber pool, and the pan fungi rubber pool in a certain ratio. Um, so that's really good. We can do any kinds of mixtures for you 
um, in case you have um, yeah, really peculiar RNA mixes. But let's first focus on our customer's favorite rebel pool, the pen prokaryote rebel pool, which is also one of the first rebel pools that we made. Uh, the pen prokaryote rebel pool covers both bacteria and archaea, as you can see with the orange um, circle here. The pan bacteria, which is designed for both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, covers the bacteria. You can see here the distribution of genera that are covered. And the pan archaea, you can see the distribution um, that, uh, or the, the coverage of uh, the genera here. And ever since we uh, generated the pan prokaryote rebel pool, customers have tested it on different species. Um, and I wanted to give you a short overview of what customers has reported that their rebel pool, that the pan prokaryote rebel pool works really well on them. And as you can see, Eschricha coli is here. I think one of the most uh, known species, a bacterial species, but also some species are here that are not well studied. So the pan prokaryote rebel pool is not just a tool that can be used on the three most studied bacteria, but also on all kinds of bacteria. And here I wanted to show you and give you um, data that um, we um, made ourselves. It's in-house data from the beginning of 2020. And we used one microgram of total RNA from E. coli, high quality RNA, and we used the pan prokaryote rebel pool. And as you can see, 90% of the reads before uh, ribosomal RNA depletion mapped to ribosomal RNAs, and 60% of these just mapped to, 20, uh, to the 23S ribosomal RNA. So you cannot really use these for any kinds of data analysis. 10% are not enough. Um, and it's just a few uh, reads. So yeah, that's why ribosomal RNA depletion is needed. Um, and afterwards, you can see uh, yourself barely 3% of the reads uh, mapped to ribosomal RNA. So the depletion efficiency was really successful. And uh, with this data set, we could show you that, yes, the pen prokaryote rebel pool works very well for a very well uh, studied um, as bacterial species. But I also wanted to show you that this is not all the pen prokaryote can do. This customer um, was someone who is interested in the RNA or in the transcriptome of soil. So that customer isolated RNA from soil and wasn't 100% sure uh, which species are actually part of that mixture of RNA. So we decided on this uh, ratio. The pan prokaryote rebel pool was part of this, Arabidopsis thaliana, Ustilagomitis, and human mouse. And in this ratio, three, one, one, one. And yes, you can tell us which ratio you want, and we will make it uh, for you to have the best depletion efficiency um, that you can achieve. And this customer was, was very happy with the depletion efficiency that she achieved. It, it was 6.8% of uh, reads mapped to ribosomal RNAs uh, from all kinds of different species, uh, but it didn't want to bore you with the details. So this is, uh, I think, really great data that you can see um, the pan prokaryote rubber pool also works not just on E. coli, but also on any kinds of species. And again, ever since we uh, launched the pan prokaryote rubber pool, it, it has been used by scientists. And now um, finally, a, a few of uh, people have published with it. And these three publications include the pan prokaryote rubber pool um, in 2020, 2021, and again, 2021. Um, so we're really excited about these publications. But obviously, these are just the publications from the pen prokaryote rubber pool. I will also show you some other publications uh, with the other rubber pools. And this, I, th I think this data is uh, a very great data set that we just recently did. Um, and we updated the pen bacteria rubber pool. Um, which we know works well on high quality RNA, as you can see here. Um, but we wanted to ch challenge ourselves a little bit. So we did not just use e. Coli, uh, e. coli RNA for this test, but we used 19 different bacterial RNA to test this on high quality RNA. And you can see here before depletion, above 90% of the reads mapped to ribosomal RNAs, 
And after depleting it with the panbacteria ribopool, pool, barely 3% mapped to ribosomal RNAs. So this is already great news. The pan bacteria can be used on metatranscriptomics and is really efficient. But the challenge in this data set actually was, does it actually work on really, really degraded RNA? This, the VIN values were below three, so the sequences were just 100 to 200 um, nucleotides long. So super, super short, short and very fragmented RNA. And as you can see, more than 90% of the reads mapped to ribosomal RNAs before depletion. We didn't expect anything else. And then you can see 8% of the reads mapped to ribosomal RNAs, despite the fact that this RNA was so degraded, um, the ribopool worked really well. So we were really excited about this data and you guys are the first ones to see this data set. We have not published it anywhere yet. So thank you all for attending again. Um, yeah, we're really excited about this data set. And I also wanted to show you uh, some data that uh, is also from uh, us about the pan archaea rebel pool. We used it on five different um, five different species, um, including Halophyrax vulcani, of course. Um, and yeah, it was high quality RNA, as you can also see here in this bioanalyzer, LSU and SSU. You can distinctly see it. Um, high quality RNA, total RNA before ribosomal RNA depletion, and this gray um i don't know if you can see it very well but this gray um bioanalyzer run uh is the depleted rna and of course you cannot really see anything on this bioanalyzer so of course we sequenced it before depletion 16.5 uh of the reads did not map to ribosomal rna so you cannot use this however after depleting the ribosomal rnas with the pan archaea rebel pool 90 7% of the reads did not map to ribosomal RNA. So 3% only mapped to ribosomal RNAs. We were happy that it, that the pan archaea also works on a group of different archaeal species. And let's move away from the prokaryotes. Uh, let's now focus on the pan plant rebel pool. The pan plant rebel pool, we designed it last year in the summer and um, we designed it uh, for these uh, genera from flowering plants. So both eudicots and monocots are covered. And yes, Arabidopsis thaliana is also covered, of course. Um, and uh, last year we had um, our collaborators, Dr. Bruno Hüttel and Dr. Christian Wöhle um, from the Max Planck Genome Center in Cologne, test the pan plant ribopool on eight different um, species from the genera Rosacea, Fabacea and Brassicacea. And thank you again for the testing. Um, and they verified the depletion efficiency of 91 to 98% of the different uh, plants. So this is um, really a, a high efficiency and we were very happy about the pan plant being so great at depleting the ribosomal RNAs of these uh, eight um, species. And just a few weeks ago, a customer from China published in Nature Protocols and they used or they compared the thermal rebel minus uh, plant kit with the rebel pool pan plant. Um, and as you can read for yourself, it is necessary to perform two rounds of ribosomal RNA depletion with the thermal rebel minus plant kit and only one round is needed for rebel pool probe. And I think this sentence summarizes it, it very well. Um, and this was also our goal. So we wanted to create uh, ribosomal RNA depletion kits that are efficient and reproducible and that with which you can save money and time. So um, yeah, this is really great uh, information. And now let's uh, look at um, our single species for pools. I know it looks a little um, a lot, um, but that's only due to a lot of scientists working with the most unique species uh, sneaking and seeking a uh, ribosomal RNA depletion kit for their um, species. And of, of course, we have like very standard species like Escherichia coli, uh, mouse and rat and human part of our single species rebel pools, but we also have like this Schmitti Mediterranea that I mentioned before, 
Uh, we also have these uh, these algae like Chlamydomonas reinhardi and Emilia, Emiliana Huxley as uh, single species gravel pools. And actually today, a customer from the USA has um, confirmed that he wants us to uh, do a ribosomal RNA depletion kit for a red algae. So sooner rather than later, we will have one more algae part of our um, portfolio. And here I also wanted to show you, yes, uh, the single species rubble pools have also been already used uh, by scientists and published. So this is also, again, really great news. And now I wanted to also show you some independent data again from a customer from the Ohio University in the USA, Ronan Carroll. So shout out to her. Thank you very much for providing this um, data for us. She used Staphylococcus aureus RNA and unsurprisingly she used the Staphylococcus aureus ribopool kit to deplete the ribosomal RNAs and um, since it's unpublished data I cannot show you all of the details but this is the details that I could show you and I think you can see it already for yourself 95 to 99 percent depletion efficiency it's a really great efficiency and the customer was happy so uh, we are happy and then last but not least, I wanted to show you um, our special applications rubber pools. We have special applications rubber pools um, for degraded RNA samples and FFPE samples, for example, human, mouse, and rat, shown here, and then Drosophila melanogasta and Serenobitis elegans. Um, and then this very unique um, yeah, experiment, ribosome profiling. If you don't know what ribosome profiling is, it's basically um sequencing the translatome meaning that you only sequence those sequences that are protected by the ribosome since you all probably know the ribosome it um translates from rna into proteins so this is the last step uh between rnas and uh, proteins and that's why also people are interested in it um and it's a, a multi-step very very complex um and I think it's seven days, seven day uh, workflow for this ribosome profiling. And uh, ever since we started making these rebel pools, customers have asked us, yeah, can we use them on ribosome profiling? And we always said, yeah, I think theoretically you can. And then um, ever since they uh, told us, yeah, we still have some RNAs that are still left um, after ribosomal RNA depletion. And we were like, okay, send us the data, we will look at them. And we have realized that during ribosome profiling, you don't just have some RNAs um, that are just there, but you have a very distinct rRNA contaminant pattern. And I will show you a picture in a few slides about this. Um, but I think it's very, very interesting, this ribosome profiling topic. Um, and even though we, in 2019, we did not have any uniform um, used RNA depletion kits for ribosome profiling, but even then uh, a customer has asked us, can you design a ribos uh, ribosomal RNA depletion uh, probe against our highly abundant rRNA contaminants that occur during ribosome profiling? And we of course said, yes, we can. And they published with it. And 2020, somebody also published, Ryan et al. Uh, they published in Nature Communications with um, another rebel pool. And here in uh, this year, somebody also published about ribosome profiling and used our rubber pools. And I wanted to show you some data. Um, this is a new data set just recently, uh, a customer of ours from the Max Planck Institute for Biochemistry in Planeck near Munich um, has um, worked with us to, to kind of generate a rubber pool, a RNA depletion kit for C. elegans. And as you can see, um, and usually people are very happy if they only have like 30 to 40 percent of reads that they can use for the data analysis and this customer was very very happy that they even achieved a depletion efficiency so, so that they have 63 to 66 percent of reads uh, for data analysis so this is really great depletion efficiency even though it looks very uh not good compared to the data that i showed you before but ribosome profiling is a very distinct um it's a very distinct yeah, experiment compared to normal RNA-seq. And I also wanted to show you some other data from Jonas Peters. I already showed this data um, a few 
months, actually last year in a webinar, but Jonas Peters from the MDC in Berlin, he used a, back then it was a normal, it was this FFPE uh, human rubber pool on his data. And as you can see, between 50% of the reads um, mapped to uh, mRNA. So he was really happy about the depletion efficiency here as well. Um, and also he did a Spearman correlation between two runs. Um, and he was very happy because the Spearman correlation was 0.95, meaning the rubber boots did not, or the experiment itself also did not introduce any biases. Moreover, we also have another data set from David Getfield, and he asked us um, to design custom oligos for his mouse, um, for his mouse ribosome profiling samples as back then it was, this is data from two, 2020, back then we did not have a mouse rubber pool, um, but with him we also created a mouse rubber pool that works for um, many more um, or that you can use as a independent customer. And this is the data set that I mentioned. Um, this is what it looks like when you do ribosome profiling and we mapped the uh, rRNA contaminants to rDNA, to human rDNA. So this is human uh, from human samples. And you can see there's some very, very extremely abundant parts of the ribosomal RNAs that just cannot be depleted with a normal rebel pool or, or just another normal rRNA depletion kit. And so we made it to our we we made it our goal to create something that can be uniformly used. And in October we will launch the next generation of ribosome profiling specific rebel pools for human ribosome profiling. And we adjusted uh, this rebel pool that we will launch based on data from the University of Regensburg, the Broad Institute, Princess Maxima Center for Pediatric uh, Pediatric. Um, oncology and the University of Bern. So shout out to them and thank you very much for working with us on this. Um, and also we will um, launch in October a, a gel marker called RiboCut with which you can cut precisely these 30 mer sequences that are protected by the uh, ribosome um, from this, like this, there's one step uh, in which uh, it, it involves a preparative gel and usually we have seen that some of our customers cannot really precisely cut it out because there's no gel marker uh, made for ribosome profiling. So we decided we will help you with this and make a gel marker called RiboCut. And we, like I said, it will launch in October. And during this immensely complex um, workflow, there's also one part where you actually have to um, have to purify the ribosomes um, with um, with a um, with a sucrose um, gradient, and we will also in next year in March we will launch a uh, unit that will help you achieve this great um, um, yeah purification purification protocol. Um, and as you can see, this ADS, this is the monosomes. This is the ones that people uh, want to study. This is the 30 mer um, sequences that uh, this rubble pool is also made to deplete the ribosomal RNAs from. And also um, in April of next year, we will launch a ribosome profiling kit with a five-day protocol instead of a seven-day protocol. Uh, but yeah, more information will come in the next few months. So uh, sign up for our um, newsletter and we will keep you updated on, on this, on the Rebels on Profiling, um, things that we will launch in the next few months. And here I just wanted to remind you about the Rebel Pool benefits again. Um, the Rebel Pools are a complex pool of optimally de designed DNA probes that are biotinylated. And uh, the rubber pools can be um, designed for any species or abundant RNA. Um, it enables detection of small and long non polyadenylated RNAs. It is suitable for metatranscriptomics, as I've showed you before in the data with the pan bacteria and pan archaea. The rubber pools are highly efficient and specific, as I've seen, I've showed you with all of the data that I've showed today from in house uh, experiments and customer experiments. 
And moreover, we have a broad RNA input range uh, between 10 nanogram and three microgram of total RNA can be processed with the rival pool, but we've also had some customers working with 7.5 microgram or even 10 microgram. But if you want to do that, please talk to us first and we will find a, the optimal solution for you. And moreover, I showed you that the workflow is fast and quite easy. Um, the rebel pools are priced um, competitively and are HPLC purified. The rebel pool kits uh, and probes come as 12, 24 and 96 reactions. And also, if you are a first time customer, you can uh, buy the rubber pool kits as a six reaction trial kit. And everything is shipped at room temperature. And the kits obviously include everything that is needed for ribosomal RNA depletion. All the buffer speeds and the cleanup reagents are included. And you can uh, purchase the rubber pool probes alone outside of the kit and also the high. Um, quality struck David and coated magnetic beads that are inside the, the kit, you can also purchase them outside of the kit. And thank you for your attendance and attention. Um, if you have any questions, I've seen that there's a few people uh, writing here in the chat. So thank you for that. Uh, we will answer some of your questions now and some of the questions uh, later via email um, if it's too many. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions and want to talk to me directly, I am Anna Lisner, and this is my email address, anna.lisner at siTools.de. Um, and if you're located in Germany or Austria, you can always contact uh, Monika Burbach at monika.burbach at biozyme.com. And we will happily help you with your species or species mixture or yeah, anything uh, you are working with. And yeah. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, uh, thank you, Anna, for your great presentation. And uh, so if someone has a question, please uh, type it into the chat box. As Anna mentioned, we will answer them now or later on. And I start with the first questions. I, I think it was on slide 10. Um, was the ribopool tested for input below? 100 nanogram. I think it come up yeah. at around this. Uh, okay. Um, so this uh, RNA was not tested below 10 nanogram. I am I'm not 100% sure how much the Yana Kim used here in these experiments, but I think it was around one microgram. Um, but yes, we have already done tests below 100 nanogram, and we've seen that uh, you can use the rubber pools on 10 nanogram. Uh, yeah, and, but that's basically the limit. And if you want to use even less, um, you can come talk to us and we can find a solution for you. Okay, and and now I have the next questions. Um, how is, is it complicated to work with a complex mixes of uh, spaces? Well, yes and no. Um, the complicated part is finding out which species are in those in, in the sample and um, finding out the ratio between this, the species. But once you kind of know the species uh, ratio and which species are in there, we can um, come up together with a ratio that the row pools um, should represent. And then we can uh, produce it for you and send it to you and you can test it out. So the second part is not so complicated. Okay, I read the next question. Okay, uh, um, uh, has the ribo pools been complete, uh, compared to ribo zero? Yes, um, we have had a few requests for this question actually <laughs> in the past as well, but I did not want to include the data here. But yes, in fact, I mean, if you go to our website, you can find the data there. Um, it's uh, cytosbiotech.com rebel pools, but um, yeah, between us, the rebel pools outperformed rebel zero, even like the uh, enzyme free rebel zero, it, they outperformed in terms of depletion efficiency. So the rebel pools were just a little bit better in terms of efficient efficiency. And in terms of introducing a bias, the rebel pools were quite a bit better than rebel zero. And that's mostly due to rival pools being a defined uh, pool of oligos that are 
multiply, uh, multiple times uh, biotinylated compared to Rebo Zero, that it's just a wild mixture of RNA that is biotinylated. Okay, and I think here we have now the last questions. Um, I was wondering if you have tested depletion of RNA extracted from human skin, which has suffered great degradation. Oh, that's a great question. I don't think that there's any data I've heard of where a customer has um, used RNA isolated from human skin. We had a few interesting human um, uh, sample origins, but that, I don't think that we have had skin. But in case you said it's de degraded. So we have had a few uh, degraded RNA samples. Um, One of them was FFPE, and the rebel pools work very well on those because the degraded RNA, um, uh, the degraded RNA sample of rebel pools that I showed you for the special applications, they are actually rebel pools or oligos that cover the entire ribosomal RNA and are actually tiled. So there's an overlap in between the uh, oligos, enabling like perfect. Uh, depletion, even though the RNA is horribly degraded. Okay, so Anna, I will say thanks again. And if you have any questions, uh, you, you can send us just an email, Anna or me, and we will take care of them. Okay, um, I wish you a nice afternoon and evening and hopefully we see you again uh, on another webinar from Biozyme or Cytus. Goodbye. Yeah, thank you from my side as well. Goodbye.